They root the gears and up-and-coming keyboard brand coming here from the Philippines that sets to provide quality boards on a budget. Their GG100B is a great example of that, providing bare bones and fully built options for the user's preference, not to mention that low asking price. But how does it stack up against the market? Let's find out! While Garuda Gear has sent me this unit, they have no say in my opinions for this keyboard. They are watching this video at the same time as you do. Opening the nicely designed GG100B box, we are first greeted with the board itself wrapped in plastic. We'll get to that later. For now, let's see the other contents of the box. Opening it deeper, we see the manual, a nice braided cable, a keycap and switch puller combo, as well as a free brush for cleaning the board. Finally, opening the plastic reveals us the GG100B in all of its smoky black glory. The GG100B is a no-frills budget 1800 layout board that is as compact as a TKL. Now for the newcomers into the hobby, let me explain. An 1800 layout is basically a full-size keyboard compacted a bit to be the size of a TKL. In this instance, you have more space for your desk and for the mouse, with the compromise of a tighter and much more compact layout in which the F rows, the arrow keys, as well as the numpad are joined together to make a whole brick of a keyboard. I find this layout quite busy to the eye and in using it, it does get the job done, provided that you don't mind the accidental mispress of the F rows and maybe the numpad. Going to the board proper, I got mine in a smoke black variant, which emphasizes the RGB within. And I must say, it looks so nice for a budget board. On the front, we see the aforementioned 1800 layout, while on the sides, we see the semi-translucent design of the case, referenced by the RGB underneath. On the rear, we see the Type-C on the center, and on the back, we have some complexity. Besides the 2.4 GHz dongle, planked in the middle, we also see the two-stage rubber feet letting you adjust the front height of the board. It is in the middle that we see the GG100B sticker as well as the tri-mode switch for the board. As yes, with the battery inside, you can use this on wired, wireless with Bluetooth as well as with the 2.4GHz dongle I mentioned before. But before testing all of that, let's hear it stuck with the Gatheron Brown switches. To say that I'm impressed with the stock sound test is a huge understatement. Not only are the stabs tube out of the box, they are tuned quite well. The included silicone dampener did ensure that the board is hollow free even on stock. And the only thing I want to modify on this board are the gutter and brown switches as it was the one causing the board to be pingy due to the spring. Made out of ABS plastic for the white variant and polycarbonate for the smoky black I have here. The board feels quite sturdy to the hand, no signs of creaking or bending on my unit. And weighing in at only 110 grams, this board feels light and easy to carry around. In its default position, you're looking at a front height of 18mm and back height of 30mm, while using the rubber feet increase it respectively. I got no bad remarks on this board. It's a budget board that punches above its weight class, and I'm all for it. 
If I had any complaints, it's that the RGB illumination is not well diffused on the sides of the black variant. But this is remedied on the white version. The switches that come included with the board are the Gateron Brown switches, which are some unlubed tactile switches. But you can also get this in an Otemo variant for cheaper. There's also a bare bones variant should you wish to add your own keycap and switches. The stock Gateron Browns, feel wise, is what I describe to be a light tactile, not as a deep bump as the U40. Sound wise, it's quite scratchy and pingy, but it's nothing a little lube can fix. The PCB is north facing sadly, but I do get why it is. For the target audience of this, a priority for them is the RGB. The good thing is, is that it's 5 pin hot swap with perky RGB. And with the shine through keycaps, it does show it off quite well. Legends are alright for the most part, and if you don't fancy this type of keycaps, you could always go the bare bone route and buy some off brand keycaps from Shopee. The included plate on this board is made out of steel, and this produces a clacky sound profile overall. I'd imagine custom plate cutters like PMX.GG to make a third party pump plate or PC plate for this board, should you wish to change up the sound profile a bit. But luckily, it doesn't exhibit any pinging as it has a plastic case and a silicone cutout that sandwiches the plate and the PCB. I did encounter pinging, but it was mainly from the gather and brown switches. As customary for a three mount design, this board is stiff as it's screwed into the back of the case. If you want to mod this further into a DIY gasket mount, my boy Fusakal MKB has just that, and I'll link it up top. Now that you heard the stock config for this board, let's try and improve upon it with some simple mods. I first remove the keycaps and switches from the case, pulling it out gently to avoid any switch breaking. I then remove the screws that position the PCB and plate into the case, as well as the stand-up screws for the plate. For the first mod, I opted to go with the PE foam mod, which gives it a foamy and marbly sound profile, sometimes common on higher-end boards. I then mounted the silicone back in place and mounted some switches for it to be stable and aligned. Next up, I taped the back of the PCB to be able to reverb the sound a bit more. I just applied two layers of masking tape on the back of the PCB, excluding the part of the JST connector and the mode switch. Moving on, as I said in the intro, it didn't warrant the need for any stab tuning as it sounds great stock. So I just reassembled it back and added in my own cable mod premium ABS laser keycaps into the mix. And here is the final build. It sounds alright for the most part, but the Gatron Browns are holding this back. For comparison, here it is with NK Creams provided by channel sponsor Kurt Bro Switches.
On the times I've used this, I haven't encountered any disconnects or drops during normal use. The battery is big enough to even last weeks, and with the RGB, this sure looks the part, especially with the white housing. If you're a newbie to the hobby and don't want to miss out on the numpad, this surely is an option, but putting it into perspective, if you're gonna add more, you could opt to spend for the Synag 98. But keep in mind, you'll need to spend your own money for keycaps and switches, and that's gonna add up since it's a full-size keyboard as well. I'd say this board fills the budget segment quite well, for those who don't want to or are afraid to tinker with their boards, or maybe just wants a simple full-size keyboard with all the features included, like the keycaps, switches, and the tri-mode connection, all in one. I'd happily recommend this to the newcomers of the hobby. And if Garuda Gear is watching, I'd love to see my opinions and my feedback be implemented on the next version of this keyboard. How about you? What other boards in this price range would you like me to review? Comment them down below. I'm John JB Raba, and I'll see you in the next video.